Stand on big business about yourself. And most importantly, and number one is building that relationship with God and keeping that as number one. What's good, YouTube? It's your girl, Stacia Nicole, back at it again with another video. Y'all, uh, uh, mm, 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 mm. your girl has been gone for a minute, okay? I had to take a step back because it was a lot going on. I ain't gonna lie, this this life stuff is it's something, okay? It's not even life. It's just adulting, like unlearning, learning, the, uh, healing. You feel me? Uh, like all that. I'm trying to think of the words, but like it's so many. Like I can't even think of one. But um, anyway, I just want to talk to y'all, like, and just give y'all an update, like, mommy life, single mommy life, young mommy life, life in general, general as a young girl as a young woman okay growing into the woman of god that he's called me to be let's talk about it we're gonna talk today about confidence like we just going off the dome for real for real. like i just turn the camera on whatever the lord wants to say we're gonna say and keep it like that so i just first and foremost lord i just ask that you lead and guide me as i speak to this camera today i speak to your your people or even those who are not a believer i just pray father god that you give me the words to say don't allow me to say anything that will be outside of your will but align me with your purpose for this video today oh god give me the heart posture um and the mindset to speak on things that you would like me to speak on lord holy spirit lead and guide me have your way in the name of yeshua jesus i pray amen Let's just give y'all a brief, brief update. My life right now, it's a lot going on. There's a lot going on, a lot of moving pieces, but I'm here, okay? Praise the Lord, I'm here, I'm still here. I'm grateful, truly. Like, I've been waking up like, Lord, oof, I'm up. like, you let me to see, you allow me to see another day. I'm so thankful, truly, from the bottom of my heart. And so, boom, life, life updates by, from Stasia. Life update, what's going on? What's new with Stasia? What's new with Anastasia? I'm not going by Stasia no more. See, that's the old me, okay? Out the dog. Y'all know, like I said, season started. So we have our first game next week. Practices every day during the week. Um, I'm working as a substitute teacher. I love it. It's great. I can pick up any shifts I want pretty much any time I want. Um, as far, like, far as shifts, I mean, like, it, it, like, there's options. Like, there's so many people that need subs. Like, you pick which one you want. And as long as they ain't taken already, you better get on it quick, though. There you are. Great money. Um, flexible to schedule. And then as well as um, school and being a mom. Also, while trying to navigate healing me, finding my confidence, finding myself. And most importantly, and number one, is building that relationship with God and keeping that as number one. It's so easy to get off course when there's so much going on that you're trying to juggle, that you, you feel me, put God in third place when he has to be in first. See, that's the thing. It's not going to work that way. What you're seeking for and what you're searching for in the Lord, you, you're not going to find it if you put him in third place because he ain't going to talk. He, he always is talking, but you ain't going to hear him. You have to put him first. I'm learning that. And it's tough because I'm so used to putting everything else in this place and idolizing things. That's adultery over God, putting things above the Lord. And I just want to stop and repent of that, Lord, right now. For putting things, people, anything above you, before you, in the name of Jesus. I just repent, Father, and I pray that you fix my heart posture. And allow me to continue to seek you first, in Jesus' name. So, anyway, we're going to talk, okay? First and foremost, um, like I said... We, we, that's kind of like the update, how it's been going. Um, and I just kind of want to talk today, guys, like I said, about like building, like how it is as a Christian, as a young woman, as a young believer, um, navigating life, whether it's not being, you don't have to be a mom necessarily. Like that's just my story. That's just my journey. We all have different journeys, but the whole message in, you feel me? Like I've gone through some things that may have been different than you. But it doesn't mean it's not credible to your journey or vice versa. Someone that hasn't gone through my story, they may have a different story. They may have two kids, but it doesn't mean it's not credible and could benefit and help me and encourage me in my walk with the Lord. And God uses people, right? He uses the people that he needs to use for specific people because he knows who can reach what, right? We all have a purpose. We have a call. It's up to us if we want to answer that. But in order to answer that call, you have to be confident 
Number one, what, I, what I'm learning exactly in this present moment is you have to have a confidence that doesn't come from the things of this world, but it has to come from him. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. When I walk in rooms and my pastor tell me that, shout out to Pastor Tasha, she said, you have to walk into rooms like the authority, like knowing that your father already went before you and what he's telling you and what he's showing you and the believers, like you stand on his word. His word is true. You stand on it and you be confident and you be bold in it, period. Not bowing down, shying down to no demons, right? We not, no, 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 we're not doing that. And that's something for the long time since I was younger, I struggled with confidence because I was basing and trying to find my confidence and validation in other people. And that's what got me in the situation where I'm in, where I'm at today, being a, a mom. <laughs> that's what got a lot of us are in relationships with people because we're trying to find validation. We're finding false validation in people that can let us down at any time. But when your confidence comes from him, the one that's greater that is in you than he that is in the world, Jehovah Jireh, the same spirit that was in Jesus Christ, that confidence never fades away. So I just want to talk to you guys today. That's Thank you, Lord, for the direction. The direction of this video is to talk about, again, the confidence that is needed in the situation or the confidence that we need to have as a woman of God, as a woman of faith, period, as a woman, as a child of God, the confidence you need to have. At a young age, you guys, I didn't know my confidence. I didn't have confidence in myself. I was very naive, um, very gullible, like due to situations that I've been through when I was younger. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm going through, going through the therapy part of it. We all have trauma. Like I used to be ashamed and embarrassed, but like, honestly, like, I'm grateful I can admit it because that me that makes me free. When you speak the truth, the truth sets you free. Some people like to act and hide all behind their problems. Like everything's all fine and dandy and hide up behind. Like I said, the counterfeit that's a, that's on you. But for me, I know the truth sets me free and I want to set other people free. So I'm very, very transparent about things. I'm learning how to say what to say and what not to say as well. But I'm very transparent when it comes to exposing situations. It's called exposing for a reason because the enemy likes to hide. Okay. So boom. Didn't have confidence growing up. Didn't know who I was. My family dynamic. dynamic. I don't want to even get too much into that. But my mom and dad, just a toxic situation. My dad was an alcoholic. My mom, you know what I'm saying? They would argue. She was very angry. A lot of things happened, right? Didn't have a voice. Didn't know how to use my voice. Always knew I was different, right? Especially at like when I got to my freshman year, sophomore year in high school, I knew I was different. I always would sit in my room. I remember and like, I just feel I'm different. I'm special. I'm different. But never fully living out what that meant. You know what I'm saying? So boom. I get to high school. It's exactly my freshman year. <laughs> and that's when I met my child's father. My freshman year of high school. My I didn't have confidence in myself. Like I said, my body. Like I had friends that had nice bodies. You know what I'm saying? Like got the dudes. And like as a young girl, like I didn't know. Like I'm just like, oh, like, you know. My body was, I didn't have a big old butt. You know what I'm saying? Like, I wasn't confident the way I moved, the way I walked. It wasn't like with my head held high. Like, hi, nice to meet you. It was like, oh, yeah. Like, oh, you know, I'm just being so transparent. It makes me want to cry because like, and I'm st I still struggle with certain things like this today. Now, it's not as bad, but I still, you feel me, have familiarities in that areas. And it breaks my heart when I see her and think about it because I'm like, bro. <laughs> but this young girl, Anastasia. Insecure about her body. Not to mention, you got people that do talk about you for real. You got people that hate on you. You got people that it, it's a it's a joke to bully. They get a laughter out of bullying. Oh, you got a flat butt. You got, you know what I'm saying? Like, ooh, like, you know, just all these things, pancake butt. Like, I mean, I'm about to laugh talking about it. But it's like, those things as a young person, when you're around, everybody in the scene they got a fat butt and they all everyone's all like dang girl i'm trying to get on that and then you're the only one they're like talking and laughing about you like that will kill your confidence period already didn't even have any you know what i'm saying and it's like being young 
my mom and my dad they didn't teach me what that meant they didn't they didn't teach me i didn't learn that right but like i said i always knew i was different remember that and i'm just being very honest and transparent with you guys right now this is a part of my healing process when i'm on here making videos it's a part of my healing my healing so when i met my child's father he like was on my body like he loved like he was like, i love your body you're beautiful like he would just tell me what i wanted to hear fed me like you feel, like made me feel like a boost in my confidence boosting my self-esteem oh i love your body like you know like touch on me like and you know that feeling as a at a young age like i never you know felt that before it felt good i'm like oh i like this i like this kind of hug like you know just being real and so he was off and on like he you know did he was cheating he was not loyal to nobody like in high school he just actually made it that the other day like he was never loyal to nobody but he wanted to like you feel me it was he was old he was older he was two years older than me he's two years older than me but in high school i'm sorry I'm slow he was he is two years older than me and in high school he was two grades older than me and so long story short when i started to get that validation from him I soon became dependent on that and it got really bad because when you depend on somebody and you let somebody take you high when you let somebody that's not God or something that is not God that make you feel and boost your self-esteem be careful because as soon as they let go psh, drop and you're broken even worse that's what happened to me that's my story that's why I didn't want to let go right it was hard for me because I'm like why i just i love him yeah i i love him i love how he makes me feel i love how he makes me feel important you know but it really wasn't that he was making me feel important you guys he didn't know as as i grow in christ i'm learning what true love means i'm learning what true validation means right but in the false sense of the carnal and the flesh i felt oh i'm important to somebody at least somebody sees me Somebody thinks I'm cute. Somebody thinks I'm beautiful. At this point, you know, I'm young, growing up. And there's a lot of guys at this point. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's a lot of dudes. What do you think? At the young age, they want to have sex with you. They want your body. There's not a lot of... There's, it was rare to find someone that's really trying to take somebody serious at the age of 16. Like, we had guy friends. But, like, a lot of guys, like I said, in this generation, like, people was horn dogs, okay? Trying to get here, trying to get there. And then... I opened that door at a young age. Like, I was raped at a young age. My first time having sex, lost, lose my virginity. I was in a situation. And I don't even like to tell the story. And I didn't plan on telling the story. But I'll explain the whole thing if need be. But long story short, I was in a situation where I was very, for some time, I was like, did I just, did someone just force me to have sex at a young age? I always told myself I wanted to wait till marriage. And I put myself in a situation. It was with it was somebody that I've been around before. It was a person I never had sex with before. Clearly, I was a virgin. I was in a situation though with a friend where she was dating his friend, and I was going to hang out with them. And I'm just in my head again, vulnerable, not knowing who I am, naive. I just want to go hang out. This man was older. I think he was like a sophomore, or he was like a junior or senior. He was older. He had sex before. He was a football player. Boom. Took advantage. I'm telling him no. I'm telling him no. Boom. boom. And, like That's not the, the message of this point. But I do want to be very transparent of how these things happen. <laughs> how these things happen. I didn't have the confidence enough to get up. I didn't have a voice enough to get up and say no. I said no, no. But God, but people think when girls are like no. Like it, it got twisted. It got manipulated. Because he thought, oh, she don't really, if she didn't really want to be here, she would get up. No, I didn't know who I was. I didn't know my words. I didn't have a voice. I didn't know how to speak up. So in my mind, in my mind, I was losing it. In my mind, I'm crying. In my mind, I'm like, oh my God, this is the worst nightmare. Not to mention, I already knew like me and him were not together. We're not talking. Took advantage of me at a young age. I know ever since in my life had changed. My life had changed forever. And I and I felt ever since then, it's like I didn't care about 
it is what it is. I already lost my virginity. I already gave myself. It's not important no more. So when these situations will come around where guys, I would be, you know, in a relationship that want to have sex, I would be like, okay, we haven't said that. That's what it is. Like, that's all I knew my work to be, right? That's all I knew. And so when I got back, my, I said, me and my child's father get back around to that. This happened in between me and him. Like I said, me and him, like we were friends off and on. He was doing him. Like I just told y'all, he was a cheater. He admitted it. And me and him weren't, me and him weren't dating, right? Me and him were just friends in high school. We would hang out. We'd go to the movies. Our group, you know, my friend would hang out with his friend. You feel me? Like we would say hi to each other at school, keep it pushing. Always just on and off though. And once I got to my senior year in high school, at this point, I've been through a lot of things. A lot of things had occurred. But when I got to my senior year of high school, me and him, the day of my graduation, or my open house, one of the two, me and him literally had met up. We started kicking it again. We started chopping it up. Boom, boom, boom. And I remember him telling me, this is when I was really serious about my walk with God. This is when I really began my my journey, um, in my, my awakening, like with the Lord truly. Um, but of course, the enemy this is this is the plot like i said the enemy has an assignment there's an assignment there's a the demonic assignment that the enemy should have placed on our lives right that was an assignment from the enemy i truly believe that because it was trying to get me caught up it was trying to continue to give me the cycle of making him allow him to make me feel validated i never really knew until recently that that was what was going on and so I'm going, I'm going, I'm going, and we, me and him are, you know, talking, and I'm like, hey, yeah, like, I'm trying to focus on my relationship with God right now, like, I'm telling him about God, like, you know, I try to be like, yeah, like, God is good, like, I'm, you know, expressing how I feel about the Lord, and how good he is, and just, you know, how you are, like, when you're a baby Christian, you want to tell everybody about that new start of disciple dating, or whatever, discipleship dating, and it's like, girl, like, what is you doing, you're not supposed to be sleeping with your assignment, like, what is you doing? And so I remember him asking me to be his girlfriend. And I remember telling him, I said, I'm not having sex with you. So, and I know that's what you're going to want if I'm your girlfriend. He's like, well, I'm not talking to you if you're not going to be my girlfriend. That was manipulation. That was gaslighting me. Because you've been talking to this whole time. But because I don't want to be your girlfriend. Because deep down, you just want to have sex with me. So what do I do? I still, I said, I want to still talk to him. Why didn't I, I didn't know at the time. Why did I still want to talk to him? If this, if this person doesn't accept me for who I am or where I am, where I'm at, why would I still want to talk to him? Because I was finding validation in him. I was finding my self-worth in him, right? And that was where I messed up and which, and which led me to having a child with him. So that's, like I said, what led me to sticking in this relationship, which is a plot twist of the enemy. And the cycle keeps going, right? So again, it started from a situation. Didn't know myself, didn't know my worth at a young age. Wasn't seeing her business because I wasn't confident in myself. I wasn't, I had a voice I knew deep down in my heart. No, nah, this ain't right. I don't want that, but I didn't speak up for myself. And it led me down a road where, like I said, when I found somebody, when somebody was validating me, I felt like I want to just give you all my love. Like, you see me like I'm very honestly embarrassed to say that. But it's real. Like a lot of us have these things that we don't like to admit because it's embarrassing. But be real with yourself. Right. We have to be real with ourselves. God is truth. When I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior, he came to give me truth, okay? He keep it raw, straight, cut, all that. But he gives me grace. He gives me love. Thank you, Lord. And so, anyway, we move forward, right? We get in a relationship. Again, toxic cycle begins. It's bad. It's bad. Like, I'm going back at it with him. I don't trust him. I knew he was a cheater since high school. It got bad, for one, the soul tie, we started having sex, we sleeping together, you feel me? We making love every night, like, on some dumb, you know, like, young stuff. We start doing stuff, we get, like, I'm talking about, it gets very intense. Like, I can remember, I can explain, like, the feeling, it, it was very evil. Like, it was so bad, like, we both, like, the way it was, like, oh, it makes me sick. Like, I don't know, just the neck, like, the energy, feeding off each other, it was demonic. Like, I just, that's all I can say, Ugh. 
And so at the time, like I said, I thought, oh, that was love. Like, he, he loves me. Like, the way we make each other feel, then I'll be with him. It felt good. It was like my home away from home. I went to college at this point. Like I said, I graduated and I was, I was in college now. So I would always be over there up under him. You feel me? Distracted from my purpose. Distracted from, like I said before in my last video about basketball and everything. Distracted from everything that God had was setting up. You know what I'm saying for me? With basketball, with school, with just being a light, you know, like and being a mentor to other young women. The Lord was setting that up for me. But as he's setting that up, my eyes caught focus over here and looked at the enemy, not even realizing it's the enemy, not even realizing now with the understanding that I have, it's Satan dressed in disguise. It's his demons, it's his principalities trying to suck me back in, trying to keep me from my purpose. So as I'm looking over here, distracted for a good minute, you guys, I mean... I was off and on with him for a while. It was toxic. Both parts. I didn't know. Like I said, I was upset with him. Why didn't I just leave him alone? Don't ask me. I just kept staying. Everyone was like, why don't you just leave? Because I don't want to leave this person. Like, he makes me feel good. Like, just stay with me so that you can validate me. Like, and like I said, like, it wasn't that I was thinking that at the time, you guys. It was like, I felt genuinely like I loved being with him. I enjoyed being with him. Like, I loved being like, you know, a girlfriend, like being able to like, you know, like inspire, encourage him, you know what I'm saying? Have his back, look out for him, having that like family duo dynamic that I didn't have when I was younger. I was searching for that, vice versa. He, you know, his situation with his family, we were trying to like, it was like a codependent relationship, you know what I'm saying? He was getting things out of me, you know, validation, all, vice versa, all that. And it became a toxic cycle because again, when your, your confidence and your, your, Everything that you need, like, has to come from God, the source. We are resources that God can use, but in this situation, this wasn't coming from God because it didn't do nothing besides kill, steal, and destroy. God will work it out, though. Don't get me wrong. Like, you see the situation where I'm at now. Praise the Lord. God will turn what the enemy meant for evil. He will turn for good. But it's a process that you have to go through. My heart was broken. I got pregnant. I remember... When I got pregnant, I already had made it very clear that I was not, I had abortion at a young age. I wasn't getting an abortion again. I ended up keeping my daughter, made that choice. Praise the Lord. I love my baby. But going through that process at such a young, vulnerable age, again, I was already vulnerable. You know, I was growing, kind of just maturing around that, like, small mind space that I was in, again, without knowing who I really was. I said it. I might be kind of act like confident, or I might not seem shy, but I, deep down, I was like, oh my God, I'm so scared. Like, I'm, my heart is pounding. It was very bad. Um, and so already, you know, being young and then being pregnant, like I remember me and him off and on my pregnancy, man. When I tell y'all, like I went through a lot, like during my pregnancy, like I need to process or like I need to, pro there's a lot I have to process too. So this is a part of me processing when I make videos like this. It's no shade to nobody. It's no, you feel me like this or nothing it's generally this is my story like i'm processing and i like to show others and be open because i want y'all to understand like me being open or other people being open to me and, and me seeing other people post about their stories has, has helped me genuinely tremendously that that the word of our testimony is so powerful so again pregnant young i was like what i had was just turning 18 i'm pregnant as heck like we together me and him just are off and on like he's going through his thing he's doing him cheating started happening i started peeping things his room like this is when it got bad like it was very it was to the point where i was like so like in tune like spiritually like when you have a soul tie like i could tell he was doing something like and he would drive me crazy because he would deny it it could be like him acting funny and then all of a sudden keep in mind when i first talked to him I want you up under me all the time. I like my girls coming to stay the night with me all the time. So I, once I got, you know, to doing that, I got comfortable being over there. You feel me? I enjoy being with him. Like, I enjoy, you know, being up under him. And that's what he told me he wanted. At first, I didn't want to go over there. I was not, I'm like, boy, I ain't finna be over here every day. I got stuff going on. But once you get caught up in that space, again, the enemy likes to deceive. Like, and then all of a sudden, he flipped. The mask came off. And he literally... I don't, I just want my space. Granted, I get like things were going on in our relationship. It was tough. You feel me? He's fighting things. I'm fighting things. It just was a mess. God was trying to break it apart. I was trying to hold on to it. He was just going with the flow and then getting, you know what I'm saying? Getting his satisfaction out of feeding his ego. Because when a girl stays and she's 
oh my gosh and you're i'm cheating on you even though deep down i haven't told you but you know deep down i cheated on you and you're still staying oh yeah he feels like the man while i'm fighting and going to cycles crazy in my mind pregnant boom gives me a disease boom finding out he's talking to girls boom 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 all these things all these things because i didn't know who i was and i found validation in him and when you once again you guys like i said you let somebody take you up here you let somebody take you up and as soon because they gonna drop the ball every time let me tell you they gonna drop that ball because that's you can't find validation in people you find it in god you have to know who you are in him i'm still struggling to this day because i got so many strongholds that were tied to this person that were tied to situations that literally things were built up in my mind and the way i thought in the spirit so it was it's it's bad i'm unlearning i'm doing the work because you got to do the work it was bad so bad to the point where literally like i stayed to the point where i'm like why am i still here bro like and then it's fine it got to the point where it's like man he can do what he does i'm gonna do me like do you buki like i'm gonna do me but we still finna kick it because i still want you i still want you to be my life i don't want to let you go because i'm still hurt and i don't want to feel that pain of letting you go because you you know i just want you to change or he's telling me like i just want my family like stasia can you just come on? i'm sorry like bull crap like just talking bull lying out his neck like had a whole nother relationship you guys when i tell you guys you can't let nobody make you feel a certain type of way one minute because they will let you down you got to be confident in yourself every single day you wake up not a selfish confidence not a confidence that comes from within your own self but a confidence that comes from greater that is he him the holy spirit the lord that's with me that brings me confidence that is what you need to stand on. That is the firm foundation. I didn't have that at the time. And I got comfortable in the toxicity of the back and forth and ups and downs and the things that it would do to your mind, the corruptness. The enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. The enemy knew this relationship would eventually end it, but he knew it was going to mess me up. He didn't think I was going to be able to get back up from that. When I tell y'all, I'm still, still making decisions each day to have to be like, okay, I need to do this differently. Don't get me, don't get me going about cycles. Don't get me going about when the next person comes in. We ain't going to get into that today, but it keeps going, honey. You literally got to go again. Like the cycle is going this way. You literally got to, no, and you got to do that work. And I know it's hard because it's like, it's not fair. And that's where I'm at. I, I, I'm, I'm in the middle of feeling angry because not everybody has this issue. Not everybody has this place where like mental, like mental health and like I said, knowing who you are is so important. It's so important with even your walk with Christ because when you, when he calls you out to go preach his word, you have to have a boldness knowing who you are because the enemy gonna come tell you huh you ain't all that who is you you don't got no authority oh girl you ugly like you could be praying for somebody and the enemy's gonna try to whisper something in your ear oh girl yo, you got something in your mouth you got some food in your teeth now you off now you like what 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 and the lord's trying to speak through you <sighs> again i allowed my situation I allowed a person, a man, to make me feel validated for so many years that when he dropped the ball and did what he did, that was who he was. He's always been who he was. He didn't go through the process of healing. He didn't go through the process of change. He told me that. He told me what I wanted to hear. Maybe he thought he did. But Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. If you do not go through Jesus Christ into the process of the refinement process and being renewed in your mind, what good is it? You can go back. But God, when God changes you, he changes you for the better, right? So all that time, didn't realize that that's why I kept going back. 
my feet. I mean, there was a lot of different things like soul ties. I knew my feelings were involved. I felt so broken. I already was broken before. I'm really broken now. But God is so good that you know what? He allows these things to happen. Because when you drop something like glass, boom. Let's say this glass. Okay, we're going to use this as an example. This glass, right? Let's say there was some discoloration in the glass. Um, and there was some like pieces that were chipped and just messed up, right? And okay, the only way to change this, because this is who I made you to be. Like this candle, what's inside? See? The Lord's really speaking off. Okay, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The devil is I'm finna get my point. Okay. Period. <laughs> okay, what's on the outside? Even if you break this outside of this candle. The glass, right? The glass is what's more fragile. Just like our flesh. Our, fra our flesh is fragile. It's our, fresh is our flesh is weak. But what's inside? The candle. What we really want, right? With the greatness, the, the smell, the goodness, right? It's inside of this. So God is like, okay, this is the package that, this is what I gave you. This is the life I blessed you with. There's so much goodness in it, no matter what the outside looks like. Because when you open it up, great, great. God wants to, God will allow, like, let's say you want to read, like I said, take this candle out. You want to do it. So let's say we drop this right now, break, break the glass of this candle, just like God. He allows us to be broken because he says, I don't necessarily want you to go through that. But since you made that choice to allow yourself to be broken, then guess what? My goodness, my grace, my mercy, see, my mercy covers you. My love, it covers you because that's how good he is. That he will pick up every single piece, refining it, putting it back together and making again what he said and who he said that he's called you to be. He has called you worthy. He called me beautiful. He said I was his daughter. That's where my validation has to come from. Not a man. Not a friend. Not what other people are saying. And it's hard. It's hard when people have told you all your life, oh, this, oh, that. It's hard when you don't love yourself. It's hard when you feel me, you got some extra pounds. Like, you ain't, I'm not taking care of myself. Like I said, it's, I mean, y'all can make excuses, but at a young age, you feel me? I'm not knowing what it means to do this and the third. Now that I'm older, it's hard that I didn't make those choices when I was younger and eat better and do these things because now I have a habit. You create habits and you create cycles and you create strongholds. I mean, you guys, it's so much, but it's so worth it. It's so worth it. I'm in the middle of it right now. I'm going to be honest. Like, not too long ago, I just made a, a silly mistake talking to somebody. Some of that, the Lord already, like I said, I, I know when Lord, the Lord speaks to me. This person was like, I know, like, do not talk to him. He's toxic, very evil. Like, don't talk. Pray for him, keep it pushing. I didn't listen. Because again, it felt good to have somebody. I haven't talked to nobody in a while. I've been single. I'm a single mom. Like, I'm young at college. I'm trying to find, like, some love. I just low-key really want someone to kick it with, right? Like, I'm Kyle. I be bored. I'm tired of being a mom, for real. Can I just have a friend? Can I just have somebody that just wants to hang with me? Because I just want to hang with them. Again. That's how the fast the enemy will try to, like, those thoughts in your mind will lead to one thing. And then, again, as soon as they drop the ball, you dropping, too, because you allowing them to make you feel good. Man, you better stand on big business about yourself. You got to stand on big business when it comes to the Lord's work. You are his work. You are his handy piece. You are his perfect piece that he's created. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I can't even make myself believe. All I can do is surrender to the Lord. I say, Lord, I, I, I'm here. Do your work on me, Lord. Have your way. And that's it, y'all. That's it. I'm in the process now, learning who I am, going to therapy, doing the self-work. It's not easy. I could have been to this. I had the opportunities, but I never took heed and held the warning or held onto the word. But now we are today. Here I am today, Anastasia Nicole Douglas, sharing my story. 
very open if y'all want to know more let me know if y'all want to go into depth and on certain particular parts that may pertain to you more than others comment below let your girl know because i'm here for it that's what i'm here for the lord loves us so much i pray that you have an awakening in your soul and that the enemy removes his hand from your life by the power and authority of christ jesus that all darkness all forms of darkness all forms of evil and wickedness be bounded up now and cast it out to the pits of hell where it belongs in the name of jesus right now may the lights be turned on in all their homes oh god in all their souls may you expose all wickedness and all evil oh god so that it will not hide no more but your light will expose it and they will be delivered and set free now i plead the blood of jesus now over this this YouTube video, the blood of Jesus over the other person, over the screen. And I speak a boldness and a confidence to come upon them. That's found in only you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you guys. And I'll see you next time.